man, look at this. Buttery, creamy, extra light and fluffy mashed potatoes. Mmm. Mmm. I'll tell you what. The fluffiest, lightest, best mashed potatoes that you'll ever taste. You'll be shocked at how simple this really is to get them this light and fluffy. I mean, that's just... It's like there's air in it. It is perfect. Well, hello, and welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode of Texas Cooking Today, we're going to be making mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are everyone's favorite. People just gobble these things down. They're wonderful. But there's ways of making mashed potatoes that are good, and ways that, well, produce a little more sticky, heavy results. And what I want to teach you is the way it's done in a restaurant, the way it's done so that the potatoes remain light and fluffy. You know when you go to restaurants and you get those those wonderful, perfect, fluffy potatoes, and you're sitting at home wondering, how did they do it? I want to show you. I want to show you all the tricks, all the techniques, everything you need to know to turn these into the most tasty, wonderful, delightful little mash you'll ever put in your mouth. So, come this way. Let's go over the little bit that we have to use, and let's get this show started. Our simple ingredients for mashed potatoes. Of course, you're going to need potatoes. For this, I recommend something like a russet potato. It works really, really well for mashed potatoes. Some people like to use reds. Other people like to use uh, Yukon Gold. They work also, but those do contain a little bit more moisture in them. And the idea of mash is to cook the moisture out of the potato so that it becomes light and fluffy. And even though we're going to be boiling this, you wouldn't think that that could happen in water, but it really does, and I'll show you how. Now, also, back here I have a little cream. This is some heavy cream. You can use milk or sour cream for this. Butter, salt, and garlic. If you're going to be putting your garlic in mashed potatoes, here's how I recommend doing it. And we're not going to do it on this recipe, but I'll tell you exactly what I would normally do. I would take three of these cloves to about three and a half pounds of potatoes, which is what we have here. And these will be more like three pounds after I peel them. I'll take three of these cloves and fine mince them. Put them in just a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons, and let that gently fry until they start turning about the color of a peanut. And so that's all just chopped up garlic being cooked slightly in butter. And then when you mix that into the mash after it's mashed, it comes out so much better, a much fuller, richer flavor. So that's how you'll want to do your garlic if you do mashed potatoes. And of course salt. Potatoes are very salt thirsty and I recommend some sort of beverage to enjoy cooking this meal, okay? Let's get right on to prepping those potatoes. There we go. I just finished getting everything moved over to our cutting station. Now, I'm going to show you, of course, how to peel and cut your potatoes for this particular recipe. If you already know how well, it won't interest you that much, but there's a few techniques in there you might be interested in. Also, if you see some other vegetables, it's because we're doing two shows here. I'm also shooting how to make a cream of potato soup. So if you want to see that show, you need to tune into it. But you're going to see a few of the vegetables and maybe some other pans related to that that have nothing to do with how to make this perfect mashed potatoes. We're going to turn those perfect mashed potatoes into a soup after this show. So enjoy this. Okay, let's get right on to how to work our vegetables. Now, if you're not used to slicing, then this is going to be really helpful for you. Uh, also, peeling potatoes. And I'm not going to peel all of these in front of you. I'm just going to show you how to do one, and then from there we're going to cut to a break and uh, let you finish up pre prepping yours. But there's a little device on the market. It's a vegetable peeler. If you have one, use it. They are wonderful things. And they will peel a potato quite easily. You simply run it down to the side of the potato. Isn't that sweet? Very easy, and it picks up very little meat from the potato. Another way, if you don't have a peeler, if you have a nice paring knife. Now, on a paring knife, when you're going to do this, what we're going to be doing is using the thumb and the knife. And the thumb is going to be in near proximity to the blade. So you want to be very careful. And what I'm going to be doing is, see how my thumb is here? I'm going to slide the thumb and the knife together. So the thumb never moves toward the blade like this, but they just move together. And the idea there is for my knife doesn't go too deep into the potato. My thumb becomes a guide. Isn't that swift? And I can do a potato lengthwise like this if I want. Or 
I can work it in a spiral and just take the whole skin off the outside in a spiral motion, like so. So a couple of different ways for you to do, and at that point my finger did move a little bit toward that blade, but yours really shouldn't. See what I'm doing there? And that just keeps me from diving the, the, the cutting edge too deep into the meat of the potato. That's all my finger's doing. Like I did right there, when the finger came off, it went a little bit deep. All right, so that's how you would pare that skin off of your potato. I recommend just very gentle motions with your knife and small amounts and be patient. When you're learning how to pare, it does take a little bit of time, but once you get good at it, it doesn't really take a lot, okay? And this is something I was doing since I was a little kid, so I got used to it, but then I got out of the habit because these things are really just so darn quick. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and quickly remove this skin. I'll show you how we're going to cut this up to be cooked. Now, cooking time. If you cut just large pieces of your potato, in other words, halving them, and that's all you do is just cut it in half, then it's going to take some time to cook that guy down. So what I want to do is I want to half it lengthwise, just like this, very gently. Slide your knife down and forward. Now, I want to take these, and I'll either divide them into three parts, depending on the size of the potato, or into two parts. Now, this one is a, a medium-sized potato, so I'm just going to use two parts. Right down in there, and that's simple. Now, all I have to do is cut about one inch long slices out of that potato. And this gives me a good size piece of potato to cook, and they're all very much the same. The ends will be just slightly smaller, but usually not enough so to matter. So that potato right there is ready to cook, just like that. Remember when cutting. Now there's a couple ways you need to hold this blade and something you might need to know. Your chefs are gonna tell you, pinch the blade with the thumb and forefinger and wrap these other fingers around the, the handle, like this. And this gives you what's called roll control. The blade won't slip this way or that way because you have a firmer control of it. When you have it back here, it's more prone to roll, okay? Now, when you have your hand over here on the potato to keep it from getting cut, you don't want your fingers forward like this when you're holding it. Turn the fingers under with the fingertips facing back and this part of the knuckle right here needs to be straight up and down. And that way you can use it as a guide. See there? See how my thumb is behind the fingers in a little crab motion. And that way we can cut safely. So there's your how to cut potatoes technique. Now, once I cut up all the rest of these potatoes, let's restart the film. If you would, go ahead and pause here, and we're going to move right on to there the we next have part. All of our potatoes chopped up in, in our pan. So what I'm going to do here now is just fill this with hot water and put it on top of a high flame and bring it to a boil. And I'm going to show you in just a little bit how to check this to know when they are perfectly done for mashed potatoes. Okay, let's talk for a minute about making mashed potatoes. When we're doing this, we're boiling up these potatoes. Some people would say you're just cooking water into it, but that's actually not the truth. What's happening here is moisture is actually leaving each one of these pieces of potato. And when I pull them out of here, they will be lighter and drier than when they went in. Now this is important, don't put salt in this. Salt would be sort of like brining. It's gonna make the water heavy and it's gonna make it hard for the moisture in the potatoes to leach out. Okay, so we're looking for two things here. A, of course, to cook the potato, but B is to get that moisture out of it. And then once we reduce the moisture content in our potatoes, we will then go on to deal with breaking apart the uh, chains of starch that are in those molecules that like to bond. And I'll show you how to break them apart and fix it so that they don't stick back together again. All right. Now here's the thing, how do we know when our potatoes are fully cooked? All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check it with a fork. You know, you hear people say, put a fork in it. Well, that started to break somewhat easy. That means they're getting there, but they're all still somewhat firm also. So I'm gonna give these just a few more minutes. If it starts to take on whitish edges and looks a bit dry on the edge, like starting to fall apart, that's the state we're looking to cook this to. It's time for us to discuss 
just for a moment a couple of the instruments that are commonly used for making good quality mashed potatoes. Of course, there's the typical potato masher that you see commonly used where people mash it in the pan. However, that kind of manipulation of potatoes often has a tendency to make them stiff or doughy, and that would be, you know, the, the result of overworking. The same way that if you use a uh, food processor, it also makes uh, mashed potatoes quite doughy, um, and also, uh, you know, something like a mixer. Mixers do the same thing. It's overworking it with a machine that really is your, the enemy of mashed potatoes. So what we're going to do is use one of the two devices that are commonly used. One is called a ricer. It's this little jewel here. It has a bunch of small holes on the bottom. And you put your cooked food right in the cup here and push the plunger down. And it forces that cooked food through the bottom and just little thin strings of the food come out. And this is a wonderful tool to use when it comes to making mashed potatoes. However, if you've got three or four pounds of mashed potatoes to work, you have to do this several times and this can be a little bit tiring. Also you'll have to drain the mashed potatoes or spoon them out, one of the two, into this. Let me show you another option, a tool that I like to use, especially when you're cooking mashed potatoes for maybe four or six people. They have this item here, which is a food mill, and uh, very inexpensive. You can get these for under $30, and sometimes I've seen them as low as about $20, and uh, very simple. I'm going to pour the potatoes and water straight into this while this is sitting on another pot to catch the water, and this becomes my colander. All the water runs straight through it. Then I can immediately put this back on the pot I cooked in and work my mashed potatoes out. Very, very simple. Now, if you want to do a skin on mash, that's where this machine comes a little more handy. You can use this larger sieve. I'm using the medium sized sieve today. And you can use this larger one like this. It will give you uh, a much better lumpy mashed potato and more of uh, the skin on country version. It will also pass the potatoes through there much quicker. This will still do it rather fast, but the holes are much smaller, and this is more like what the ricer does. And so without overworking the potatoes, we're going to be able to mash them just like that. Now, I need something to catch my water. Let me get another pot here. Just hang that on it, and I'm ready to pour those into this when they're finished cooking, and they are getting close. Now, let's take a look at our potatoes and see if they're starting to look the way I wanted them to look. Now they're starting, pour off some of this water, to take on that softened, whitish looking edge I told you about. That's really a good sign right there. Put my fork into that, it breaks apart easily. See there, it just crumbles. Okay, and the reason it's crumbling like that is because it has less moisture in it. Good thing, not a problem. So actually, cooking it in water doesn't cook water into the potato. It actually still works the water out of the potato and softens it so that it makes a good mash. Now, the important thing is less about water and more about what are you doing with those starch molecules. We're protecting them. I'm going to take this and pour it right in. There we go. That's easy enough. There, they're fully drained. Now all I have to do is just mill these down into the other pot and finish processing them off. Now when using your food mill, remember on these things, you're gonna need to hold it close to your body to control it. Just crank that paddle. This does not take long, not at all. See, I've already milled about half of them through there. Let's take a look at the bottom side of this and show you what I mean. See all that? See in that pot well and on the bottom how it pushes it just as little strings? Exactly what we need. See how quick this is? And the beautiful part is it doesn't work the potato too much. It works at one simple quick time. Just shoves it straight down through the sieve. Once they're pushed through it, that's that. So I just keep working it through. 
Okay, we're almost done here, and I don't see any reason to nitpick over the rest of this little bit of potato here. Most of what's left up in here has been kicked up from the paddle, and so it has already basically been mashed for us. And I can put it down into the rest of the pot if I wish. So I'll scrape off the bottom. Beautiful, perfect mash. That's what I have in the top down in here. And we're finished with that mill. So now, all I have to worry about is what I'm going to do with this to make it a perfect match. Now look in here. See how light and fluffy that is? How it's, how it's perfectly milled out? There's no substance to this now. It's all aerated. And those pro or the, excuse me, the starch molecules have been broken apart. Now we don't want them rebonding. And to uh, prevent rebonding, we want to keep the amount of work we do on this to a minimum. Now I'm gonna put in a little bit of salt. That was about a tablespoon to, or excuse me, a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half is what I started with. Get my butter. And what I want to do is to take my butter and just a couple of pats. And I want to use about a quarter of a stick for this. You can make it more buttery if you wish. The idea here is use butter at room temperature. It's already softened. And when I mix this, it's just going to emulsify it right down into the mat. I'll be doing that with a whisk. Now, we also had that cream. I'm going to put it in there right now. And still have my burner on, still providing heat. There we go. See how they're so light and just coming apart? And that's why we don't want to overwork this. We don't want to use a machine. Now, I want to taste it. Use that fork I used to break it apart with. Mm -hmm. Very tasty, quite buttery. A slight amount more salt, about another half a teaspoon. Turn it a couple of times. There we have it, folks. Don't work it any more than that. At this point, you already have the perfect mashed potatoes right there. Now, let's just get that ready to serve. There it is. It's just as simple as that. Okay? Perfect mashed potatoes means you don't overwork them. You don't work them with a the machine. You don't overwork them by hand. You let them be light and fluffy all on their own. Because you went through all of that work cooking them up to getting them perfectly light and fluffy so that they were just like they had air in them. It's just so smooth and it's buttery. Right amount of salt. Didn't require salting the pan during boiling either. No. This is something that a lot of folks just make too difficult. They overwork it. If you keep it simple, use the right tools, you will every time have the best mashed potatoes on the table. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching Texas Cooking Today. And if you're a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. And if you haven't, well, what are you waiting for? These are some good recipes. Please subscribe. And you folks have a good day. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today. The show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today where you will always find something hot and ready to eat.